Hello everyone, Rich Nance here with your Defensive Tactics Technique of the Week. Today we're going to address personal body weapons. Frank, in today's society there seems to be an aversion uh, against punching people. And it doesn't look good on camera, let's face it. Um, but you also have to realize that control holds work best before someone has really tried to injure you. Or, or escape when they're just kind of in between, or after you've already, uh, through strikes, diminished their ability to attack or escape. Right. Uh, to think that you're gonna place someone in, in a control hold who's trying to knock your block off is, is fantasy. So you do have to have these strikes, and, and a punch is a valid technique. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about whether or not a closed fist punch or a palm punch is better, depending on what you're striking. But with this uh, bag like this, you can work on a lot of different striking techniques. Keep in mind, you're never unarmed. Whether you're on duty or off, your body has personal weapons that could be used. You have hands, elbows, knees, shins, even your head could be used as a weapon. Heck, in the right circumstance, you may end up biting someone to get out of a certain hold or, or jamming your thumb in their eye, whatever you need to do. Of course, all this stuff is based on proper, reasonable use of force. But we're assuming right now uh, a strike is warranted. And we'll start out sort of from the longer range like this. When I'm going to deliver a strike with my palm, I want to target probably the suspect's head. And when I do that, he's already uh, preparing that. It is good that you have someone who knows how to hold this bag so you don't end up sliding off and popping them right in the mouth, which I'm sure has probably happened to you once or twice. That's why this bag's up here, bro. So what you're doing is <clears throat> as you're delivering these techniques, it could be with the front hand, which is the equivalent of a jab, boom. Or it could be with the rear hand where you're going to get more of your hips into the strike. And again, you're keeping your hand up here because in reality, I'm not striking a bag, I'm striking a person. So this hand's up to protect, boom, and then there I go there. That is a palm strike, and that works well at this long range. Now, if the range is cut in half, the palm strike may be ineffective because I don't have enough room to develop power in the technique. So from here, maybe I, the range is cut in half, now my arm's folded in half, looks like an elbow strike might work well there. And I can deliver this elbow horizontally like this, or at somewhat of an angle like that, which is a little harder to block. It really doesn't matter. One thing to keep in mind is if you can grab the back of the suspect's head and pull the head into the strike, you're in essence creating a head-on collision, which is going to dramatically improve the power in that technique. So to demonstrate that for you, I'm going to simulate grabbing here boom, and turning with my whole body to get my elbow into that strike. Now, does it really matter if this part hits? this part or this part, not really. If you hit with the elbow, you could slide off. So I would say with this type of elbow strike, this three inch or so area here is, is a, good, uh, a good point of reference. I wanna make a comment. We talk about grabbing somebody's head to pull them into a strike, whether you're pulling with your offhand or with your strong hand. We don't wanna grab them behind the neck. If, Rick, if Rich resists my pulling him with his neck, he's got his entire body to resist with, and it's hard to get into this. However, if, especially if, they, if the person has a lot of hair, if you get up on the crown of their head, try not to bend over. You can make them move. The body structure does not support resistance from pressure up at the top of the crown. So if you find yourself reaching back there to pull them into a strike, don't grab a neck, don't grab a shoulder, get up in the back of their hair. If they got a lot of it, the handful works and pull them into the elbow. I shaved my ponytail before this segment. Did you? But uh, you know, that's a great point. You know, pulling someone where the head goes, the body follows. So use that to your advantage. So we talked about palms, we talked about elbows. Let's talk about our lower body techniques because a lot of times it's a combination of those. I mean, if I'm just doing all strikes to your head, you're gonna wisen up to that at some point. But if I throw in a knee strike, for instance, here from this close range, that can disrupt your balance, uh, you know, divert your attention down low, and then I'm gonna come with an elbow strike. So with a knee strike, you never wanna do it just in a vacuum like this. It's gonna be, you're gonna grab hold of the guy. And if you're kneeing to the body, you wanna drive that knee in this way. So it's gonna look like this, simulating grabbing his shoulders and boom, driving my knee in just like that. Just like this, straight into the target. Don't try to go up with it like this because that's gonna be a glancing blow. So grab, pull, head on collision effect, get that knee strike in there. Now, another effective technique if you hold this bag a little lower would be a kick, like a lower level kick. And I'm gonna hit with my shin and instep, uh, instep slash boot area here. 
and I'm pivoting on this foot here, getting my body weight behind it again. Maybe I use my hands as a distraction and I deliver that kick there. Boom, and afterward, I would immediately follow that up. I never want to do a kick, again, just in a vacuum where I just go, because it's too easy to see coming. So I set that up by diverting his attention here. Maybe I throw this to get my momentum going. Boom, and then I get that kick there and I follow that technique up. So in the right situation, you want to drop that pad real quick. If we're clinched, which we'll do in another segment, the head can be used as well. And if you grab his head and I pull his face into the crown or top of my head, boom, you can imagine who's going to fare better uh -huh. in that collision. So these are your personal body weapons. They're always with you. Make sure that you're trained to use them to maximum potential.